We thought it'd be a fun time to just take a look back and share some of our favorites. Should we call them unique and memorable moments yeah. in drafts past? Yeah. We're calling it rough drafts because some of these are a little bit rough. Um, we've done the Rodgers thing a million times, Peter. I, I, I have to start here. I can't start anywhere else. 1999. Uh, Ricky Williams is a running back for the Texas Longhorns. Everybody loves Ricky. He, he, was, he was put on this planet to tote the rock. Nobody loved Ricky more than the head coach of the New Orleans Saints at the time, Mike Ditka, who loved him so much. Imagine this in modern times. He loved him so much that he decided to go to the draft for the Saints and do this. Take it away, take it away Commissioner Tagliabue. There has been a trade involving this uh, fifth pick in the draft. New Orleans' uh, first, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh round picks in this draft, and New Orleans' first and third round picks in next year's draft. The New Orleans Saints select Ricky Williams, running back, University of Texas. What was the reaction in your room when James was passed and you knew you had the deal in place with the Redskins? It was pretty calm except for me. All right, so there's Ed and Mike, and there's so much to unpack there, Peter. We have a cigar, a lit cigar in the room. Uh, that would lead to a picture of Mike Ditka wearing dreadlocks. It would lead to a picture of Ricky Williams wearing a wedding dress. Let's just recap what you just heard the commissioner just say, Peter. What was the trade compensation? For here, here we go. I, I have the compensation full screen. Bring it up. This is what was given. I watched it. All right, the night's end. The first, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. The entire draft. Just take all our picks, and we get Ricky. Next By the way, year's. and then next year's first and third. And that first was uh, LeVar Aronson. Remember, they only moved from 12 to 5. What? This wasn't from 30 to 1. There was everything. A few years back, everybody loved Saquon. Can you imagine a team being like, we'll give you our entire draft? First, draft third, Barkley. fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, for, for one player. Yeah. And he was on the team for a few years. And, and he was a he running knew, back. <laughs> he was a running back. That was the power of Ricky. We will never see that again. Shout out to Ed Warder and Mike with the Litz again. The shocker also was like a pick before... Edron James is a running back taken before, before Ricky, Ricky Williams. Williams. So yes. what was he willing to trade the Colts for Can that pick? That? <laughs> Mike loved Ricky. I mean, we all loved Ricky. All right, I'm going to go back even funny. further. Uh, 1995, yeah. okay? This is the 1995 uh, draft. Jets fans all up here in New York in their, in their feral Jets fervor because Warren Sapp, who was considered the best player in the yep. draft, was slipping down draft boards, and there was a chance that Warren Sapp would potentially be a New York Jet. But this is what happens instead. The Jets have about 10 minutes to go on the clock, and uh, the fans are letting it know which way they want to go. With the uh, ninth pick in the first round, the New York Jets select tight end from Penn State, Kyle Brady. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our first real upset, I think, at this point in the draft. This has to be the biggest mockery I've ever seen in my entire if life. We could trade a coach. Down, the I would trade him right now. absolute mockery. Receivers next year, they're going to play with six tight ends on the field. Boomer can't throw the ball more than 10 yards, so what does it matter? Boomer doesn't throw the ball more than 10 yards, so what does it matter? Boomer doesn't throw the ball more than 10 yards, so what does it matter? Let's play What do you think that guy's name is who said that? That guy right there is Tony. You think he is? Next to him is Sal. And next to Sal is like Ira. Really? Yeah, that's Maybe a Vinny in there somewhere. Yeah, that's an incredible pull. And we think the Jets thing is always overblown. Never forget that videotape. And never forget this. 2003 draft, okay? Oh, Minnesota wow. Vikings. They're one of the teams we're watching this year kind of slowly. They're the seventh overall pick, and they were considering trading down with Baltimore, who had the 10th select. That's fine. You can do that and do whatever you want. They took a little time. They took too much time, and we go to the live broadcast in which the inimitable Chris Berman is trying to explain that the Vikings took too much time and all hell is breaking loose. Good luck, Boomer. Well, <laughs> Danny, the clock is winding down on the Vikings. What's got the Vikings? Passed. They can turn the pick at any time. Again, same thing we had happen last you year. You know what? Turn your pick in. What? Jacksonville Jaguars select Byron Leftwich, quarterback from Marshall. Carolina Panthers select Jordan Gross, offensive tackle from Utah. The Minnesota Vikings select Kevin Williams, Defensive tackle from Oklahoma State. <laughs> All right, so and look at the Vikings fans' reaction. 
Unpack, right. unpack what just happened. All right, so the Vikings, they ran out of time. So the second you run out of time, any team that's coming up behind you can jump in. So the Jaguars jump in and take a franchise quarterback. The Panthers jump in and take their franchise tackle. And then the, Panther, the Vikings say, oh, I'm sorry, here, here's the pick. And when you unpack it, what you find out is that the Ravens were trying to trade. To, they wanted to get uh, Byron Leftwich, and he would have been their quarterback. They ended up with Terrell Suggs in that draft. But basically, in the shortest version, the Vikings ran out of time time and got jumped in the draft twice. order twice by two different teams before finally submitting the pick to Kevin Williams. It, it's it's one of the all time. I think it may be the all time draft moment unless Peter you want to blow our hair back or something else. As an aside, how good was Chris Berman on the, the best? I mean, gosh, how like nostalgia. Is. He still is. We saw Chris Berman at SoFi I'm Stadium. Saying. Remember? We go yeah. boomer and he goes. Does one of those. I love you, Boomer. Um, last one. Let's go last year. Everyone's wondering, is it going to be Mac? Is it going to be Justin Fields? Is it going to be Trey Lance? The Niners are on the clock. They had just traded two first-round picks to get their future ones. It's the, the suspense doesn't happen anymore in 2022. Right, everybody yet, knows. Finally, there was. And this is what happens when John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan said, you know what? Screw it. Let's go with our guy. With the third pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Trey Lance, quarterback, North Dakota State. And it is the Bison, Trey Lance. Just 17 career starts, only one game due to COVID this year. A young man from a small town in Minnesota, couldn't get recruited by many Power 5 schools as a quarterback, and he decided to bet on himself this is big. I'm excited for Trey Lance. This is somebody, again, you mentioned it, Rich. He bet on himself. He bet on himself, and the 49ers bet on him. Remember, Mac Jones was the assumed pick all draft buildup and was the national champion, the Heisman finalist, and they take Trey Lance with one start last year and 17 career starts. It's still kind of shocking. I know. We'll see how it plays out, but so little do we get surprised, and that one I felt was a genuine surprise at the draft. DJ's first words were just, this is big. <laughs> and, and I felt you, DJ. We really did. It was, and it still is to this 